So really, we are done with the chapter 9 actually, but I'm going to use this last video as a bonus add-on to just summarize some bit of stuff and introduce you to some extra stuff, which will be very fun. So firstly, we already looked at types of deformation. Remember, we look at curves, we look at graphs, we look at equations, and we look at experiments. You can basically summarize to this. Materials can have experienced two types of deformation, elastic and plastic deformation. What's the difference between the two? Well, if you look carefully, I just kind of summarize it here. You need to be able to describe how you know whether it's elastic or plastic. Well, firstly, elastic means you will return to original length after you remove the load. So if you're hanging something, remove that something. Does the object return to original? If yes, elastic. If not, the object does not return to the original length. That means it's a plastic deformation. It's gone for good. If you have a star shape, you squash it, it's never going to be a star again. Okay. And also there are graphs that we have looked at. Generally, they can pretty much have any shape. Oh, I'll just use stress and strain now instead of F and X. They're the, they have the same shape. So if it's elastic, means when you load the item, you can have who knows what curve. I'll just draw some weird curve. This is called the loading curve. And if you take off the load, it should follow exactly the same curve back. If it does, good, it is elastic. But if you have some curve and, uh oh, when you remove the load, it takes another path and goes somewhere else. That's the unloading curve. That means it is plastic deformation. And, and, the area under the graph is different. Because previously, if you loaded this to this point, the area, the energy that you use to extend the, or stretch or squash the item to that point is the blue area. When you unload it, then that is the purple area. So they are the same, exactly the same. No energy loss. Whatever you store, let's say mechanical energy, lah, mechanical, mechanical means you are moving. So you use your hand, mechanical energy or kinetic, whatever it is, stored as elastic potential or I should say strain energy. Let's use a newer term. So energy, and then you can get all the energy back in mechanical. Mechanical energy. But if when you load, wow, you use so much energy to stretch the thing. But then when you unload, you only get back this much of energy. Then there's an energy loss. So this part here, the red color, is energy loss because of plastic deformation, internal energy. Usually it's as heat, the object will get very warm. So here is, yep, this is the main idea of elastic plastic. Make sure you know how to describe this because they will ask you in paper two, sometimes in paper one as well. Now the next bit is the part where I mentioned it's kind of the extra bit. You will see this in a bit of the older past year questions because it was in the syllabus, but the new syllabus didn't state all those details. So there's a chance they may come out, but they probably won't make it a big hassle because it's not officially in the syllabus anymore. Probably have taken it out to make it more simple. But anyway, just so you know, there are different types of materials. Uh, there's a whole list here, uh, and they all have all kinds of young modulus. So maybe if you are thinking metal can only have one young modulus, eh? No, no, no. Depends on what metal. It's a whole different kinds. There's like metals and alloys. Are they composite metals? Things like that. And they have a whole range of young modulus. Look at that. Ten, uh, ten to the power of all kinds of things, gigapascals and things like that. Then you look up here, wow, ceramics. What are ceramics? Ceramics are like, you know those cup things, the bowls, your ramen bowls, your, I don't know, things that will drop and ping. Those, get, those ceramics glasses. See, they're really high up. They're very stiff. You can't easily bend a cup and, well, if you do bend it, you already have broken it. But if you get like metals, alloys, composites, you could bend them pretty well and they won't break, okay? You do a lot of bending, in fact, and then until, a, until you reach their fracture point, then they start breaking. You could bend, you could stretch, you could squash, all kinds of stuff. Then you come to the weird section. See here, there's woods, rubbers, polymer. Okay, these are the ones where you just go squish, squish. They are sometimes hard, they are sometimes soft. They are like either wood, you got plastics. What else do you have? Oh, watches. You can like bend them around, you can twist them. But if they are in a very hot place, they may get brittle and break, kind of like, almost like glass almost. So polymers, rubbers, all those are kind of like the weirder stuff, they're more squishy. But 
you don't need to memorize all these values just remember roughly is about one uh what's it giga pascal i can't see my camera is blocking it i probably moved the camera to the top left corner uh so one giga pascal here roughly between there if it's more than it's roughly ceramics metal if it's to the left it's like those rubbery stuff the stiffness is not very high a little bit of polymers inside here as well but just remember that because there are some questions in paper one which will ask you to estimate what is the young modulus of metal you know those estimate questions where you kind of guess like uh, roughly in this range giga or is it mega so kind of familiarize with yourself with this picture roughly one right and left uh, right and left is kind of a chinese term one to you one left and right roughly there is the young modulus of these kinds of materials and yes materials materials everywhere the fun part about this chapter is our scope in a levels is pretty limited but this is one of the most applicable chapters in everywhere around you there are jobs where people choose stuff for your house there are jobs that people purposely destroy stuff you know so you're like uh, what what material should i use for my cooking pan what material should i use for my stir fry the, the handle what material should you use for your car your bike what material should you use for your laptop or your earphones all these materials you have to take into account all these things your house is it metal is it steel what 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 kind of material would be best for what so very fun stuff if you ever go into this it's a cross of biochemistry and physics very interdisciplinary now the next bit i'm going to show you the extra syllabus part but they will help you a little bit in some of the earlier past year questions you will see in the handout so let's take a look at the types of materials okay so remember i mentioned types of materials generally all those you saw just now can be categorized into roughly three types of materials here's a nice table of all of them <laughs> well ductile brittle and polymeric okay don't worry i'll go through all this a little bit ductile is look at the bottom first examples like coppers metals aluminum brittle the ones that go piang and break kind of like glass ceramics polymeric uh really are all kinds of other nonsense that are not ductile brittle like rubber dna starch polyethylene like what are all these we'll just focus on rubber because that is one of the more relatable ones so what are these materials we can roughly describe as ductile materials as all those stuff that can stretch a lot before breaking uh and show plastic deformation and whereas brittle does not stretch much like much like i say you know cups and things like that they can stretch but they really cannot show much they cannot do plastic deformation they'll just break fracture polymeric i purposely left it blank because it is really 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 out of the scope of our a levels maybe if you're in chemistry you will learn about polymer chains and things like that those are basically all the polymer stuff maybe in bio you'll learn about cellular structures and things like that but that's really really beyond the scope so i'm just going to say polymeric material is just the stuff that are not ductile not brittle they're kind of somewhere in between or not at all the weird stuff so how do the graphs look like that's the main point i wanted to show you today in this last slide ductile materials if i plot a graph of stress of a strain it's like the metal uh, the, the wire experiment that we look at stretching out the wire so you would see go kind of obey hook's law and then there's some funny funny curvy thing and then break so break pa. that is how graphly the the graph of ductile material will look like if you see it reaching the end zone kind of here bending down a bit that means it's going to break okay and remember first part they obey uh what you call that hook's law and if it's plastic deformation you kind of gone somewhere here you are going to return to somewhere where you are permanently deformed i should say this is the loading curve okay at brittle material it's actually not too different at all it's just much smaller so brittle material they could still stretch they, well they can change their length a little bit but not much usually it's pretty steep oh man that's a, okay <laughs> that's supposed to be a straight line ah yeah cannot lah. let me try one last time if it's not okay straight line and then beyond that they will break maybe they can they can uh, bend a little bit but then they'll just break this is usually very very steep it's not to scale out the excesses this is just a usually a very small distance 
so like this ceramic cup made out of I think clay my friend made it for me if you try to pull it apart it may change length very small but beyond that it's just gonna break so that's what I mean it's just the front part is just obey hooks law and then bye bye everything's big same thing for glass ceramics and all kinds of stuff where you can break plates in the kitchen be very careful the last one polymeric material <laughs> is the weird one stress over strain if I try to load a material on say rubber that's why I purposely choose rubber it's gonna look something like this increase curve and then when it's gonna break it'll just go up really steep it's kind of like a power tree curve you know like y equals to x cubed <laughs> that's kind of like the shape of polymeric material when you start let's say this hairband if I start stretching a bit hard at first then suddenly oui, so easy to stretch and then if you want to break it it's really hard to stretch anymore that's the part of the graph where it's going up and it's going probably gonna break anymore if you pull some more so here if you load it that's the curve if you unload this rubber it's gonna do it's definitely confirmed gonna go some other place so this rubber will have some curve like this ah let me redraw that a moment okay so you load and then you unload it will not follow the same shape because it's uh because of the energy difference so here the energy under the loading curve is pretty big but when you unload you kind of lose a bit of energy like i mentioned so here this section is what we call the energy loss because of uh, thermal thermal energy release from the rubber so the rubber will get very hot energy release as heat sometimes you may see past here the older past here mentioned this loop as a hysteresis hysteresis loop you really don't need to memorize this term i just show it for you just to know okay rubber have very interesting ones um glass brittle they'll just always follow hook's law if not they'll break okay so that's all the different kinds of materials um, as an extra, in case they ask you this, these kinds of questions, you are ready to think of the different curves. Just focus on the graph. Don't worry about the definitions. Um, but yes, that's all for the main bit of chapter 9, types of materials and types of deformations. Two different things. Okay, let's look at these. Wow. To end up today's video, uh, today's video and also wrap up chapter 9. So here's some celebratory videos. That you can go and watch on the hydraulic press channel link is down there but basically what they do is to just spoil stuff squash stuff as you can see oh my goodness look at this that looks a lot like a polymer mm, anyway so go and review chapter 9 this is all of chapter 9 a shorter one and just remember it's all about breaking stuff well not about breaking stuff you want to see what materials do when you squash them and when you stretch them and make sure you try out some passive questions, just a few of them also down in the description below. And if you have time, go and look at all these fun videos. Just enjoy people wrecking stuff. Some of them even pull out phones and break them apart. So that's all for chapter 9. I'll see you in the next chapter.